campaign promises. All we have had from Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his so-called brain trust is a great deal of high-flown talk and virtually no action. In a nation racked by poverty, misery, and unemployment, it is deeds we want from the White House, not words. In short, Mr. President, if you are listening, we've had enough of your fireside chats. It is time to... Criticism, damn it! Nothing but criticism! I know, I know! It's awful! Did anyone see the Washington Post this morning? My friends, I say it again, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Oh, <laughs> Every cloud has a silver lining. Please. Yes. You're never fully dressed without a smile. Frank. All right. Oliver Warbucks and friend, Franklin. Thank you, Lewis. Show them in. Now, Oliver, good of you to have come. Good morning, Mr. President. Where? Who is this we have here? Mr. President, this is my good friend, Annie. She wanted so much to meet you, I, I couldn't resist bringing her along just to say hello. Annie, of course. The little girl who sang so beautifully on the radio last night. Annie, this is President Roosevelt. How do you do, President Roosevelt? How do you do, Annie? You're as lovely as you sounded on the radio. Thank you, President Roosevelt. Well, since we're all here... Yes, Annie, if you'll just wait outside. No, no, Oliver. Let Annie stay. Having a child on hand will keep us on our best behavior. Thank you, Mr. President. Annie? Uh, Harold, I don't want to hear even so much as a gosh out of you. Oliver, you know everyone, of course. But, Annie, let me introduce you. Secretary of Labor, Perkins. Secretary of State, Hull. Acting Secretary of the Treasury, Morgenthau. Secretary of the Interior, Ickes. Say hello, Harold. Hello. And my friend and aide, Mr. Lewis Howe. Now, Oliver, since you speak for those happy few Americans who have any money left, I'd like to begin with your view on matters. Mr. President, in the words of Calvin Coolidge, oh. yes, the business of this country is business. And for the good of the country and the good of you, the good of Wall Street and the good of me, we have to get my factories open again and the workers back to work. According to my latest figures, there are now 15 million Americans out of work and nearly 50 million with no visible means of support. Mr. President, if I may say so, unemployment is not our greatest problem. The dispatches from Germany are becoming more and more disturbing each day. There could be war. Germany, hell, people are starving in this country. Harold, I know that, but in the long run... What the hell? For people who are starving, there is no long run. The trouble is, it's all happening at once. Wall Street's taken another nosedive. Sit-down strikes, riots, floods, dust. And the FBI still hasn't caught Dillinger. Well, at least we're agreed on one thing. The situation is hopeless in getting worse. The Senate will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow they'll be signed. Quiet, little girl. Harold. What did you say, Annie? Well, that's all right. Go ahead, my dear. It's still a free country. Just thinking about tomorrow. Clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow. Till there's none. When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely, I just think of my chin. I'm gonna come out tomorrow So you gotta hang on till tomorrow Come what may Tomorrow, tomorrow I love ya tomorrow You're always a day away Harold the Ickies, stand up. What? You heard me, stand up. Now Harold, sing. Sing? Yes, sing, like Annie here. I just just decided that if my administration is going to be anything, it's going to be optimistic about the future of this country. Now sing. But really, Franklin, you know that I can't sing. The sun will come out tomorrow. Louder, Hedge of Autumn, to learn that tomorrow. <laughs> there'll be some Perkins. Just thinking about tomorrow. Here's the way they call the and the sorrow. Till there's none. Solo for the president. When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely, I just stick out my chin and grin 
and say, my friends, everyone, Republicans to all of us, sing! The, the sun will come out tomorrow, so you gotta hang on till tomorrow. Come what may, tomorrow, tomorrow, I love God, tomorrow, you're always a day. President, a telegram. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Excuse me, everyone. Oh, this isn't for me. It's for you, Oliver, from your secretary in New York. Hundreds of couples jamming street outside house claiming to be Annie's parents. I've begun to interview them. Suggest you return to New York at once. Signed, Grace Farrell. Well, it looks as though the hour of smiles has more listeners than we thought, huh, Annie? Gee, hundreds of couples. One of them is bound to be my mother and father. Well, Oliver, as much as I'm enjoying your company, and especially yours, Annie, I suspect you'd better get back to New York at once. Yes, if you don't mind, Mr. President, Annie. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Goodbye Annie. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. President, and thank you. No, thank you, Annie. You're the kind of person a president should have around him. Mm. Mr. President? What if we set up a hundred or a thousand federal projects? Dams. Highways. New post offices. And put the unemployed to work building them. We could create over five million new jobs within six months. And weekly paychecks would get those millions off relief and back to paying taxes. We'll build a country so strong that nobody, not even Chancellor Hitler, could ever beat us in a war. And the FBI cop babyface Nelson didn't think they're bound to catch Dillinger. Mr. President, what we've got to give this country is nothing less than a new outlook. A new vision. A new approach. A new concept. A new dedication. A new horizon. A new spirit. A new attitude. A new deal. Perkins, gentlemen, I was right the first time. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you. Tomorrow, you're only a day away. Harmony. Tomorrow.